Welcome to Architecture 2001. In this class, we'll dig into Intel architectural features, which are utilized by operating systems, virtualization systems, and to a lesser extent, firmware. In this class, we're going to use Windows kernel debugging as a means to the end to see how these particular hardware mechanisms are used in practice. But the goal of the class is not to give you a deep understanding of Windows internals. That will be covered in a future class. We're also going to come across a variety of new assembly instructions in this class, but the point is again not to really understand assembly instructions for their own sake, it's more that as we learn about the architectural features, we'll have to learn about the assembly instructions that get and set values relevant to these features. There's only two assembly instructions that we're covering just for the heck of it. So what I hope you get out of this class is a better understanding of how these Intel hardware mechanisms actually work and that will give you a good understanding and a good base for future classes on virtualization and firmware. I also hope that you learn about how hardware security mechanisms exist in the hardware and when they are or are not used by given operating systems and what this says about the security of different operating systems. Also, hopefully this should give you a good base of understanding that you can start exploring the Intel manual and seeing what other mechanisms exist there and what other things operating systems, virtualization systems, and firmware could potentially be using. If you work in one of these fields, such as operating systems, virtualization, or firmware, hopefully it'll give you a sufficient base to go off and explore and say, well, what about this new feature? Why are we not using that? Maybe we should use that. And of course, as with other classes, uh, I hope that you get out of this a satisfaction that comes from understanding how things work at a very deep level. So in the Architecture 1001 class, we covered the R flags register or E flags register, and we hit a bunch of these different flags, but most of these were status flags indicating whether or not, you know, the zero flag was set or the sign flag was set. In this class, we're going to see a variety of system flags. And these are things that speak to the current operation of the system, current privileges of certain actions, whether or not certain features are supported on this hardware and so forth. So these are, we're gonna dig in more and see more flags from the R flags register. And here's a overview of 64-bit execution mode, but in this particular class, we're only going to be adding this little bit. The rest of these are things like uh, vector instructions and floating point, which again, you know, we don't care about that much in this class. So you've already seen the 16 general purpose registers, the R flags and the RIP. And in this class, what we'll be introducing is the segment registers. And we'll be talking a lot about address spaces and virtual memory, logical addresses and so forth. But this is the nitty gritty, and this is the picture which should scare you to a first approximation. This is all the various internal data structures and, and fields and tables which the hardware automatically uses and which software sets up. And this is what we're gonna learn. And so I would understand if you said, this is madness, but this is Architecture 2001.